Hello, I'm Jim Raffone, founder of Jar of Hope, and welcome to Hope TV, where we bring hope to the community, and we'd like to publicize all the businesses that have been supporting Jar of Hope over the last few years. We're here at the Rock Out Loud studios in Morganville, New Jersey. I'm here with my co-host, Kimberly Buck. Yes, thank you so much. And this is a world where we see a lot of darkness and that is so important to us that we bring hope to you and our viewers. I'm a journalist and a storyteller by trade and I'm so excited to introduce you to some of the movers and shakers in our community. Hello and welcome to Hope TV. Today we have with us Mike Sclafani from Remax and CKO. A.K.A. Mike, good morning. Mikey Thank you. <laughs> good Thanks morning. Good with morning. Us. How are we doing? Thank you for having me. Great, great. So I know you live a very busy life. Yeah. You have a, you fit us into your schedule. We appreciate <laughs> yes. it. And we've been seeing a lot of each other lately. Absolutely. At the Alliance. Yes. How, how's it going for you so far? you feel like you're able to benefit from it? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's been great. The Alliance has brought some new connections in. Obviously, we knew each other, but now to get together, you know, once a month, it's been awesome. Yeah, and Jim's yeah. all about connecting mm -hmm. people. I am, yeah. most definitely. So let's let's explain to the audience, uh, Mike, who are you? Right? Let everybody know who you are. I know who you are. That's a great <laughs> question. I don't even right. know day to day. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, so I live a, a, a triple life, I guess, from family and business and other business. But I'm the uh, owner of CKO Kickboxing and Freehold. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a, a real estate agent with Remax out of Manalpin. But I service all of Monmouth Ocean and Middlesex counties. Nice. Yeah. And your family, how large is it? Uh, there's five of us. There's my wife, Lauren, and then I have three daughters, uh, Gabriella, who's 10, Valentina, who's eight, and Melania, who is five. So we're Italian. <laughs> and you're outnumbered. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, girls. That is not easy. Yeah. So I tell everybody that that could happen. Yep. You know, all my friends are like, ah, what are the, shot? What are the chances to go three for three on that? Right. So that happens. <laughs> and what I love about it is that you're you're still like local to your roots. Like, could you talk about where you grew up and where you are now? Yeah, sure. So uh, we moved from Staten Island to Manalpin in uh, 1993. So I was going into sixth grade. I went to the Manalpin Elementary Schools for a few years. Then I went to high school at a CBA, Christian Brothers Academy, right in Lincroft. And then I, I went there because I wanted to play baseball. So I always had a, a passion for baseball was always my main sport. So I played at CBA and then I went on to play at Rowan University as well. Yeah, I think yeah, you have mm -hmm. a, a long career. I'm sure a lot of people that may yeah. be watching have known you or have heard of you if they live in the area. You yeah. made a great name for yourself. Thank you. Most people didn't know my name was Mike until a few years ago. They just called me Veal. <laughs> Veal, Veal, Veal Scalopini. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, how did that come about? Oh, gosh. When I was uh, 13 at the Manalpin Middle School, I had a baseball coach, uh, Herb Arbeitman, great guy. Mm -hmm. If you ever went through the Manalpin schools in the uh, 90s, you definitely know Mr. Arbeitman. And I could not pronounce my last name, Scalafani. Just kept calling me Scalapini. Get over here. Scalafani. Scalafini. And then one day he shows up. He's like, I was in an Italian restaurant last night. They had veal scalapini on the uh, menu. I told my wife, we have a scalapini on the team. <laughs> He's like, from now on, we're going to call you Mikey Veal. And that was uh, almost 30 years ago now. And nice. it stuck. Yep. So all from, from all from a mispronunciation of my last name. It's funny. I can imagine. I could see you trying to get your three girls into baseball one day because it's in you, yes, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. We got to get my wife. She's a a cheer a cheer background. So oh, okay. she's kind of shoving them in that direction. Yes. Cheer, gymnastics, all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I I know from the two of you to the person mm -hmm. left and right of me, family is so much. It's everything. So how do you kind of balance the two businesses and managing your family and kind of doing it all? giving it 100%. Sure, yeah, so um, obviously you need a supportive spouse because um, to have two businesses, um, especially uh, the CKO business, at least there's a schedule to it. The real estate, there's not. It's just kind of, um, you're often working off other people's schedules. So I've uh, learned over the years to kind of get better with um, controlling my own schedule instead of saying, when are you guys free? And just leaving seven days and 24 hours a day open for them to pick. I'll uh, often say, how is, you know, well, I'll speak to my wife first. We have anything going on Wednesday evening? No, no there's no sports. You need me for help. All right, great. How's Wednesday evening for you guys? And typically that works. So it kind of is, you know, if you ever heard of time blocking? So um, I try to time block as best as possible. Like these are the times that I'm going to make myself available to show homes, take appointments. And then obviously if we need to adjust and veer off the path, we, you know, we can just kind of having that open line of communication. But you know, you definitely need a supportive spouse because um, it's not even just the appointments, it's the constant.
constant networking and getting out there where it's just like, hey, we have some downtime. Well, maybe I'll use this downtime to go create new business at that point. And for both of mm -hmm. you, I'm going to do a shameless unsponsored yeah. ad for yeah. uh, the Time Tree app. I couldn't mm -hmm. live without it. Oh, it's no great cool. for families, shared schedules, getting everything in so you could kind of appropriately allocate your time. So true. Yeah, yeah. shared schedule, very important. Yes. Like, oh yes, Lauren has access to my life. She, she sees exactly <laughs> where I am, and then she'll add things like, you know, go pick up at gymnastics, and I'm like, got it, it's yeah. on my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's a, a huge mm. distinction between being busy and actually being productive. Sure. And actually, so truth be told, I've actually worked with Mike as a realtor and with CKO Boxing, yep. truth mm -hmm. be told. But I want, I want, I think it's important for people to understand how you got started in real estate, right? Your background, correct me if I'm wrong, is in finance, yep. right? You graduated Rowan College in a great degree in finance, yep. and then you had a nice career at Lehman Brothers yep. before the unfortunate downfall of the financial industry, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, so just to, sorry to jump in, but I figured I'll just, I know where you were going with it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I uh, went to school for finance and just naturally, I'm like, just like a good soldier, I'm like, I'm gonna go get a job in business. Mm -hmm. And the big banks at the time in the early 2000s were Lehman Brothers, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citi, um, and Bear Stearns. So I was like, all right, I happen to have a friend whose dad was at Lehman Brothers. And he was like, if you would like to come work with me, start off in accounting. Mm -hmm. Once you're within the company, you can kind of move around. I was like, that sounds great. Uh, started with him two years in. I got uh, can, hooked up with someone in, in uh, human resources for equities, and they were like, "Oh, we think you'd be great over mm -hmm. in our division." And I was like, "Ah, oh, sweet." I was like, "I don't know much about it." They're like, "It's fine. You got the personality. We'll teach you." And I said, "Okay." <laughs> so I was in equities, thinking like, "All right." I went from accounting to front office in two years. Mm -hmm. Like, um, really unheard of. Like, you don't make that jump. Usually, there's you know a bridge to get to the front sure. office. And then uh, as luck would have it, the company was around 150 years, and four years into me working there, I went bankrupt. So I said, all right, well, that was a curveball. But um, I did, my the original guy from accounting um, asked me, he's like, listen, I know you're in equities, but they need to unwind this company. They went bankrupt with billions of dollars and mm -hmm. assets and real estate around the, the world. He goes, it's not just gonna close. He's like, would you wanna come back in accounting? It's a one year deal, but if they still need us, we'll just keep signing one year contracts. So within that time frame, I was there four years pre-bankruptcy and I was there another nine years on nine one year deals mm -hmm. where I rose to like a VP level. So people in finance think I'm nuts that I was a vice president in finance. I could have easily just went to another bank, but I knew that the corporate life wasn't really my thing. Driving in to Jersey City or Manhattan, depending where I was that year, um, you know, an hour and a half, two hours in, sitting there for eight, nine, ten hours a day to only schlep back another hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, yeah, this isn't uh, the life I, I want to lead. So my mind was always kind of, you know, outside, looking out the window almost of like, what else could I do? Right. And like any entrepreneur that you talk to, you kind of work on your side business while you're still in your main um, your main field. So CKO, I happened to join the CKO in Hoboken um, right before I got married just to lose weight for my wedding. <laughs> and then just like anybody else, I just started looking around like, this seems like a fun concept. I was like, I've never actually completed a gym membership in my life until I joined <laughs> CKO. So I'm like, maybe there's something to this. Like a regular guy like me who sits at a, a desk all day enjoyed this workout. And um, the next thing you know, I was uh, looking into franchise opportunities and I ended up opening my freehold location in 2013, which is the one I still have. But I also opened uh, CK on Wall Township in 2015, early in 15 of CK on Marlboro, later in 2015, and CK on Tom's River in 2018. Right. And then um, eventually, it just it's a lot, you know, to, to have four small businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, uh, you know, opening a, a big corporate uh, franchise where it's just like you just put people there and it runs. These are even though it's a franchise, it is mom and pop feel. They want to see me, and it's hard to split yourself into four pieces while having a full-time job. So true. So yeah. I, I want mm -hmm. to take a note, and mm -hmm. I, I want to impress upon people why this is called Hope TV, right? So we want to make everybody out there who feels as if you're desperate or if you feel that something is not going your way and you might be heading down a dead end, I want you to take a look at what Mike just said here and um, think about it. He's taking a position, a one-year contract for nine separate years, knowing that eventually he's going to be out of a career, but he actually has the, the wherewithal to get himself started in another career while he's working someplace instead of waiting for it all to come to an end. So that's that's why I have a deep affection for Mike because he he doesn't, it's not the woe is me, this is happening to me syndrome. He's actually taking a bull by the horns and doing something about it because he's got a family. 
very much like the jar of hope story and what I do with my son. It's not the woe is me story. So Mike just, you know, as we say in my house, we strap on the boots and tie them up and go to work every day. And, and Mike has done that. And, you know, he had four locations at one point, which is yep. huge. But getting back to your, your finance background, right? And I think it's important because when you work with other realtors and, and it's not a, a knock on them, it's just how it helps you be a head and shoulders above the rest is you've got a financial background. You can look at financial statements and understand them. You can look at deals and make sense of them for your client. And yep. I experienced that with our family when we would do putting the deals together. Does this make sense? Yep. And I highly encourage anybody who is in the, uh, the Monmouth County, uh, Ocean County area who's looking for a realtor to check up, uh, have a conversation with Mike to see if deals that you're about to get into, because this market nowadays is crazy, if it's the right deal for you, because he's got that background. And then not to mention, he's got the fighting background where he <laughs> never gives up, which I love, I love about that. Which we can have another conversation, which I think ties back to athletics, because yep. um, when kids are younger, they always learn in sports never to give up. That's why it's important for kids. If you ever take someone's uh, look at their background, you'll see a lot of it has to do with that, you know, yep. that they're, they're, they're never giving up attitude. So. Uh, I've never shared that with you before. I'm glad I got this opportunity to now as to why I enjoy working with you. Uh, Mike is also a former board member for Jar of Hope uh, and has done amazing things with us. So not only has he got a family, not only is he running two businesses which are just in complete uh, parallel of each other, but uh, he also then gives back to the community, which is why he's here today. Uh, he deserves the spotlight to be, be to share what he's all about in his family because he's a family man first and foremost which is awesome. So awesome. I appreciate you being here. This is a great conversation. Oh, and um, so how can people get in touch with you? What's your Instagram channel? Oh, my Instagram, as Kim loves, is uh, at Mikey Veal. <laughs> That's it. So I, uh, again, you'll nobody will ever forget that nickname. But uh, yeah, definitely on Instagram, Facebook, Michael Sclafani. But, um, and then obviously uh, all my real estate uh, goes through my personal Instagram page. And then CKO would be at CKO Freehold. Yes. In that same vein, one thing that we both mm -hmm. admire so much about you is that you are a man of marketing, like a man-made <laughs> marketing guy. Yes. So how important is it if you could share with our viewers, you know, it's you definitely took a leap of faith. I was I was, I'm even more impressed with you now that I've actually heard nice. more about your history and you know, you you not only launched yourself into one small business but mm -hmm. multiple at one time. Mm -hmm. So how important is it to market yourself? Some people I find are afraid of blasting out their messages because they're going to yep. feel embarrassed or if it's not well received. What on your uh, on the list of priorities like is marketing and branding yourself? How important is it? Sure. Well, it's for me, it's everything. Um, so I guess starting with the real estate, uh, so so many realtors are afraid to post because they well I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to be annoying. And I'm like, well, then don't be annoying. Don't <laughs> don't always post. Uh, just list that just sold. Mix in some fun content that makes people enjoy what they're looking at. Like I, I certainly am someone who posts just listed, just sold under contract. So I want people to know that I'm active. You know, it, could it be seen as bragging? Sure, but I'm, I know I'm not bragging in my heart. I'm not trying to brag. I just want to let the world know like, hey, I know what I'm doing. So if you need somebody to guide you, like that's, you know, I, I could be your guy. Mm -hmm. But then I also mix in funny stuff to showcase like my personality. Like ball with the kids I saw yeah. over the last weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mix in the family yeah. stuff, of course, just to let everybody know that I am normal and I do actually do things outside of work. But um, just really having fun with the social media because I always say like, if you have to go work with someone for three, four months, and especially in this real estate environment, where it's super stressful. Why not do it with somebody who you know you might have fun with? You know, when we're going to look at a home, it's not just me walking in like, okay, the kitchen's white. Oh, look, that's a nice bathroom. Like, no, we're having fun. You know, I'm educating you on maybe the stuff that you don't know about. You know, how old is the hot water heater? How old is the roof? So, um, so I like to let people know that we're gonna have a good time, but I also know what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. that's why I post the just list is just sold, just so you see I'm active. As far as um, CKO goes, I always um, laugh, and Jim's probably heard me uh, tell people this before, is like, I don't have a fitness background. Like, I'm not a, I always, people always joke when, when I say it, I'm like, I'm not a fitness guy. Like, I was never someone who enjoyed fitness. I wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to get to the gym today. Like, CKO was the gym that I liked. Like, uh, lifting weights at other places, 
Never in my life did I enjoy that. So when people say, well, I don't understand how to CKO successful, I'm like, because I'm, I, I love marketing. So I love having fun with my customers and we're doing the theme weeks and we're keeping it interesting. And, and it's one thing to do with theme week, but if they don't know about it, well, good is it, right? So right. I gotta go put the message out there. So uh, staying consistent is uh, the most important part, really. is um, Because if you post one funny thing, well, good is it if you don't post another funny thing right. for four months? You know, it's you got to stay point. on top of it and just consistently pushing things out there and doing a theme week at CKO. Like I could do a theme week once, but you know, it's really not going to catch on if I don't commit to it. So when we do something, we'll do an 80s week, we'll do a 90s week, an early 2000s week. August we have country music week coming up, and we'll we'll stick in with the week. You know, we'll we'll go all about it, well, and then my fun. current customers enjoy it, so it keeps it fresh. Right. But it all goes into the marketing. What good are these ideas if you're not pushing it out to the customer base or the hopefully future customer base? I'm curious mm -hmm. about you know these mm -hmm. ideas because we're talking about a president of a charity, mm -hmm. and I'm a TV personality. So these are two mm -hmm. very saturated industries. You know, there are many charities mm -hmm. nationally. There are many journalists nationally. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give us? as far as marketing our charity and our business, our brand specifically, like yeah. just tips. Yeah, so it's funny you say saturated. There's 11,000 realtors in Monmouth and Ocean County, right? And I just started real estate seven years ago. And uh, for 2023 out of the 11,000, I finished 15 and wow. in seven years. So it's people get, often get intimidated like, oh, this is a saturated market, etc. I'm like, well, you know what? Real estate had 11,000 realtors before I entered the world. <laughs> what happened? It was like, I stayed true to who I was and that's the content I consistently put out. And then people were people who are like-minded got drawn to that. Mm -hmm. sure. So, and again, staying consistent, we're putting it out there. If this is what, you know, um, a certain business, what you want to do in business, that's great. Let the world know and then stay consistent with it. Because if you keep saying, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, that message is going to, you know, get picked up on. And then you're going to eventually become the go-to for that business for your sphere. So grow your sphere as much as humanly possible, attending as many events. For as much as being ranked 15 in 2023 is great, it does mean nothing in 2024. So I'm continuing to get out there. I was at an event yesterday, I was, I'll was i be at another event uh, next week. So just constantly making new connections, that cheesy saying, your network is your net worth. Well, yep. there's truth to that. So it's, again, going back to the being consistent with the marketing, who's gonna see it if you're not consistently growing your, your network? So you gotta always get out there and then focus on what you're gonna put out there. Yeah, and but the mm -hmm. two of you are mm -hmm. everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys don't miss a beat. So I could tell, I could see why you guys are you align so well together. <laughs> yeah, we got great personalities. The downfall is Mike is in an environment where they could be happy and exciting because they're doing new things, presenting new keys to new homes. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm in an environment where there's uh, unfortunately a lot of death and. Uh, yes. it's, it's not good, but what we do do is help dying children, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. and, and you've been instrumental to that, and uh, I look forward to the next projects that we can do together to, mm -hmm. to help some more families. So it's been amazing. It's an amazing ride. So you both, and it's all about it hope. It's all about hope. You have to have hope. You have to have commitment, as Mike said, and uh, you have to have drive. You have to make sure that every day you get up and do what you say you're going to do. Do what you say and say what you mean, you know, so... Uh, and it's you are important. bringing that uh, in in a bad situation. You are bringing uh, happiness to people when you could, you know, relieve some burdens from them. Because sure. um, you might not realize the burden that you are, you know, removing from them, and it does give them that that, that little bit of hope and happiness. Yeah. You know, that's something I would totally focus on if I were marketing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we call it. It's a bittersweet <laughs> moment, right? We yep. have a family, mm -hmm. the Wells family, that's mm -hmm. in Upper New York. Uh, they have an 11 year old son who unfortunately lost the ability to walk, and they mm -hmm. needed a wheelchair accessible van. Yep. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't. Uh, buy the entire van, which is a $90,000 purchase. Yeah. It's just, it's a bad economy right now, so things are tight, but we were able to help them get the down payment to purchase the van, and then uh, there were other community members that came out to help them finance the entire van. So for them to get their child around, to get the doctor's appointments, the stores, the schools, et cetera, is, is, is that moment of hope and happiness for them in that bittersweet time. So um, I, I will continue to do that with the help and support of the John Hope community, which is awesome. We'll continue so. to do it. Which, by the way, we have a golf outing August 9th. You want to come out, it's at Mercer Oaks. Go to jarvoop.org forward slash golf. Let's continue to help these dying children. So, Mike, we know that everybody can reach you on Instagram at Mikey Veal, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. <laughs> uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your real estate company, right? It's named... So, I, I'm at Remax, mm -hmm. but then um, 
as I was mentioning, uh, there's about 11,000 realtors. So I was always looking for different ways to kind of differentiate. Um, and I have a baseball background. Mm -hmm. So I uh, came up with a website, like a catchy kind of name, thirdbaserealestate.com, your last stop before home. Right. So it's kind of like a spin off of my baseball background, but I tie it into real estate. So it's just another way to advertise myself. People, I have it on all my marketing material, thirdbaserealestate.com. And I typically, when people read the lit, your last stop for home, I can see the glass like removed from yeah. their eyes. Like I actually see the light bulb go off and they're like, oh, I get that. Right. You know, so um, it's just another way for people when they're picking, uh, it's just another way to you know stick out from the crowd. I think it's a brilliant tagline. Right. And how right. can people reach you for real estate? Um, I would say head right over to my website, thirdbaserealestate.com. You could put uh, fill in your info right there, what you're looking for, buying, selling, renting, and then I'll, uh, it'll come right to me and I'll take care of you. Excellent. I mm -hmm. think if you're buying or selling, give Mike a call. You won't regret it. Thanks. <laughs>